そして分かったんだ巨人を滅ぼすことができるのは悪魔だ悪魔をよみがえらせるそれが俺の使命だったんだそれがおめおめと生き残っちまった俺の意味なんだよ Throughout Attack on Titan, we see a large amount of characters who shoulder a burden and seem to become quote unquote devils in a reluctant fashion. Due to the world's sad state of affairs, these are people that are forced to do things that they otherwise wouldn't to obtain something that this setting just doesn't want to give to them. Regardless of whether these goals lean more towards selfish or selfless, they see their dreams and realize that they cannot attain them without unsavory methods. And most of them follow through anyway, but the point is that there is always that sense of initial hesitance or sadness associated with their task. They don't want to do this, but they need to. However, there is one character who has emerged from the background to go against the grain in this regard and become the willing, exact type of asshole that this story needs to pull off its desired multidimensionality. Flock Forrester distinguishes himself in that he's the only major character who fully embraces this role and revels in it, having no qualms whatsoever about what needs to be done. And that's not even getting into the specifics of how condescending and cruel he gets as things ramp up. Given this, it makes total sense that he's so widely disliked by the audience. Flock is an absolute menace, and you can't really disparage anyone for hating him. But personally, I've never really been someone to have distaste for a fictional character that's well written, no matter how much of a dickhead they can be. If a character contributes to my engagement and enjoyment of a story, then to be honest, I'll probably end up liking them even if they're completely awful human beings. And Flock definitely falls into that category, in my opinion. I think he's so great, and I'm really glad that he's in Attack on Titan as this sort of ideological counterweight and look into the psyche of a different sort of person. One not anywhere near as heroic, empathetic, or compassionate as a lot of the ones we've come to know and love. And yet, Flock didn't start out this way at all, and that's where the beauty of his character lies. He's introduced to the story in an inconspicuous fashion, as what was essentially a naive background character used to throw into sharp relief how comparatively hardened our protagonists were. In the wake of the scout's resurgence, and in a rush of romantic and patriotic pride, Flock bought into Ervin's propaganda and switched over from the garrison right before the mission to retake Shiganshina. However, all of that idealism was swiftly crushed after bearing witness to harsh reality. <laughs> でもまさかそうやって死んでいくことがこんなに何の意味もないことだなんて思いもしなかったんだ<笑>考えてみりゃそういう人たちの方が圧倒的に多いはずなのになんで自分だけは違うって思っちまったんだろう。Underneath all of the tears and understandable cowering, it is here where things first began to change for Flock. He would later admit to being an absolute coward, and that cowardice reared itself when he first confronted the possibility of dying in a meaningless way. Flock's biggest motivation is a simple and quite relatable one. He doesn't want his life to be pointless, and he wants to be given the freedom to choose what to die for. Leaving this world without leaving a mark is terrifying to him. And after seeing this bloodshed, he realizes the type of mark he wants to leave. He wants to contribute to a powerful change in this world to rescue Eldia from this hell. He wants to be influential. In his eyes, through the commander's devilish exploits, Ervin brought meaning to what would have otherwise been completely meaningless deaths. And perhaps that is what made Flock respect him. He hated Ervin for putting everyone through that and leading them to death, but at the same time, he realized that someone like him was needed to survive and carve open the path to freedom. And after seeing Ervin's willingness to do whatever he could to push forward, Flock came to deeply value the concept of a devil like this to lead them. 
which ultimately led to his change in demeanor and his disagreement with everyone who wanted to save Armin instead of Ervin. And all of these factors all of this time ago planted a seed in his psyche. After this mission, Flock quickly grew to despise any of those outside the walls who would contribute to enforcing this hell upon them. Which is pretty understandable if you ask me. In the wake of all of this truth and upheaval, every character has their own ideas at this point of what to make of the world, and the key is that none of them are totally right or totally wrong. Who's to say that saving Armin was actually the optimal decision? Who can really argue against the merits of a demonic figure to spearhead Eldia? Who can blame him for not wanting to put faith in the open-mindedness of nations that have subjugated them for so long? He survived the exact same mission that the others did, and even if he hadn't, his voice is just as important as anyone else's. Just like everyone, Flock has the right to fight and stand for what he believes will lead to the best world for him and his people. He has the right to make his own choices. なんの勲章だ。誰を弔う。これから補充する調査兵団には本当のことを言えよ。俺みてえな腰抜けが間違って入ってこねえようにな。エルヴィン団長なしでこれからどうするつもりなんだよ。そりゃ、俺みてえな
Of course I don't agree with him, and I feel absolutely horrible for the mass amounts of tragedy and death that parody causes in their Liberio invasion, but I don't think he's an evil person at this point for seeing everyone outside the walls as an enemy given the things he's seen. It may not be a great way to go about things, but it's not an unfathomable mindset for someone like him to have. However, this is where the borderline coherent side of Flock falls away to reveal someone who not only has no reservations in being the person to help lead this new nationalist Eldian Empire, but who takes pride in it and revels in it. He crosses the line from understandable yet unlikable radicalist into a genuine menace when he starts showing his borderline sadism and extreme condescension, and when he uses Keith Shadis as a symbolic personification of stamping out the old ways by beating the shit out of him without any hint of remorse. But he would never have been able to do all of this alone, and he was enabled by latching onto the ideal hero that he believed in. Through a nearly parasitic attachment to this devil, people like Flock fuel the symbol of this tragic Halos figure that Strife consistently perpetuates in the paradoxical hope to end said Strife. No matter the source, or how they may have felt about them before, they need this figure, and for as long as this cycle persists, they will always need this figure. <laughs> And as someone with a gigantic amount of admiration for a separate figure in the late Commander, while Flock doesn't carry forward Ervin's genuine ideals and sentiment, he indirectly helps the story criticize the big negatives of Ervin's influence and methods again and again through how poorly he communicates Ervin's true feelings. And personally, I think it puts an even more tragic tinge on Ervin's character to see how Flock responds in the wake of his death as a personification of his legacy. We all know that Levi is more so Ervin's legacy than anyone else, but Flock does all of the loud things to make him seem like the figurehead, spouting Ervin's pro-war rhetoric, following what he believed his ideals to be, exaggerating the points that Ervin had already stretched for his and humanity's cause, and interpreting them to be far different in meaning than the root of where they came from. But in all honesty, Ervin was only really truthful with a tiny handful of people, so it's hard to blame others for misinterpreting him. Yet, I think that he would feel deeply sad to see that this is what became of his words and legacy. Hopefully those he trusted would carry on his true will and break this cycle, because Flock is sure as hell not it. And in my opinion, all of this stems from his experiences in Shiganshina, which make him an unbending ideologue characterized solely by his viewpoint, and his confidence in that viewpoint. His entire personality and motives blend with this combined mindset to make him an insufferable person with this purpose and core defining who he is. The experience of war completely changed him into such a dark person with a totally new and dangerous perspective, and it's quite a sad situation in that way. However, he wasn't a bad guy at all when we first met him. He was a bit of a coward, a bit pompous and presumptuous, but overall he was just a regular kid pretty indistinguishable from the devil he turned into. And while this change is pretty drastic, it's completely natural at the same time. Not to mention that it's also very likely that he was hiding a good amount of this side of him for when the Jaegerists took over. If we take a snapshot of Flock pre-time skip, one consisting of his experiences, cowardice, guilt, newfound resolve, and purpose, it all extrapolates beautifully into the asshole villain that we now see, and what he represents is much more profound than any of us tend to give him credit for at first glance. I don't think that Flock is super sympathetic or anything, and he's without doubt turned into a terrible person, but he's the symbolic figurehead for the dark side of the ordinary person in this type of setting. There are some who try to see both sides of the conflict and keep an open perspective. People like Armin, or Falco, or a good number of our other major protagonists. But Flock has no patience for that. 
This one-minded pragmatism and adherence to what one believes is right is such a huge factor in our world today. And though he's portrayed as extreme and wicked, his presence is so important for accentuating those that do have that empathy that he's bereft of, while showing that Isayama is absolutely aware and capable of presenting the complexity and scale of these sociopolitics. War changes people, some for the better and some for the worse. Some cannot find it within themselves to be sympathetic, willing to see all sides and able to give the benefit of the doubt to one's supposed enemy. That is Flock. He's the face of the common man that isn't blessed with broader awareness, perspective, and empathy. Either that, or he just doesn't care. Flock is the type of person that a conflict like this would undoubtedly bring about, and I'm so glad that he's a factor in this story. And the thing he fixated on all that time ago, the ability to make a choice, he was able to do that. He made his choice here to follow Eren without question and never even thought about looking back. He made this path for himself, he enjoyed it, and he would have no complaints about dealing with the consequences. Yet in this vein, to add to the litany of things he's done wrong, one more thing that he was incorrect about was that he was a complete coward. Because he does have courage within him. He mustered up enough bravery to join Ervin's charge, he used his newfound ideals to stand up to Mikasa, and he held nothing back in defending what he believed was right in the aftermath. And post time skip, well, he can justifiably be accused of lots of things, but cowardice isn't one of them. I definitely wouldn't go as far as to say that Flock is us, partly because I'd like to be a bit less cynical than that, but it's more like Flock is someone who we could end up like if our minds were battered and shaped by the experience of having to live in this hell. He represents the idea that this story consistently draws attention to of life having meaning simply due to being born into this world. Even fodder like him should be granted the freedom to choose how to live and how to die. And to defend that freedom, he did what he did. He simply doesn't care about showing kindness or an open mind. He's just a regular, vulnerable guy trying to exist in a way that he can be proud of. And sometimes that's all it takes, and that's all conflict needs to turn someone into something unrecognizable. He's a representation of the perspective of the everyman and how they can be influenced by different factors, and of how, in response to bloodshed and wanting one's voice to be heard and life to have meaning, one can become radicalized and extreme through warfare, desensitized to the tragedy and unwilling to see other perspectives. It's no wonder that someone like him came about as a result of this mess. And despite his cruelty, there's a lot that we can learn from someone like him, with the core of his character being so very human and raw and flawed. He's very poignant in that way, and in my opinion, Attack on Titan is very much benefited by his presence. Many thanks for watching. <laughs> Why are you alive?